you're going to see in a video coming up um, soon, I think it's maybe uploading today, um, why I'm thinking that Micro Four Thirds um, cameras are my way to go for property photography. So for example, the Panasonic uh, G7 um, kind of stuff. Um, and it's due to, and one of the biggest reasons is also due to depth of field. Now, I'm sure many of you know that depth of field is a great thing that people love to have arguments about. It's like, oh, what is greater depth of field? What is shallow depth of field? What is more depth of field? And people just use the wrong terminology um, all over the place. Um, however, here's just an example that I'm wanting to show to you. And I'm also going to explain oh, one website to check out is DOFmaster. Dot com depth of field master and I'm going to say how this is a little bit wrong um, going on here and um, so for this photo um, for example I was shooting with Panasonic G7 on this one um, and I was shooting at seven millimeters so seven millimeters is the equivalent focal length of 14 millimeters on a full frame camera however when you're at seven millimeters you have a much greater greater depth depth of field so that means more stuff is in focus. Um, and here's a perfect example. He, here I'm shooting at f5 and uh, I didn't really need to shoot at f5 but look I've got everything from the edge of this sofa which is what's that maybe 80 centimeters in front of me all the way to the candle in the background. And in fact even better all the way to the house outside on the other side of the street. So pretty much everything is in focus. I'm not having to stop down to like f8 um, or anything like that. Um, I can stay almost at my maximum aperture. So on the depth of field master, let me just explain why this is a little bit wrong. Um, so for example, if I, I'll put it so it's as close to my camera as possible. So here, uh, the Panasonic GH2, GH1, something like that. If I'm at seven millimeters, and if I was at f2.8, all I need to do is focus 1.1 meters in front of me, 110 centimeters in front of me, and therefore I have pretty much got everything in focus. I have got from 50 centimeters in front all the way to 19 meters behind, um, and I'm very close to the hyperfocal distance. If I just added another 6 centimeters, everything would be in focus, um, so or everything beyond 1.6 meters would be in focus. Now where this is, I would say, wrong is when it's talking about the circle of confusion because I, the way they've calculated it, they have done it on the size of the sensor rather than the resolution of the sensor. So this is one of the reasons that many people who went with the um, the Nikon D800 or the Canon 5DRS, whatever it is, the 50 megapixels, um, a lot of people are like, I just, like, everything's not in focus or everything's a little bit blurry, usually because they're pixel peeping and they're looking at it at 100% view um, on, their, on their computer. And so what the circle of confusion is, is, um, in fact, I'm not going to tell you because there's a even better version. Uh, somebody has done an amazing video and I'm really upset. I've just subscribed to him. He hasn't done a video for like five months and before that was four years ago. But he has done a fantastic video talking about the circle of confusion. Check out this guy. Um, in fact, I'll just give him a quick thumbs up because it was so good. There it is. And uh, he, he explains very well what's on the focal plane and all that kind of stuff. So. In the end, what it really should be is, is, if you look at this image, it's not about the size of this, let's say that's the sensor, it's about the resolution of the sensor. And that's where you have, if you are the tiniest bit out of focus, it will be hitting more than one pixel, more than one sensor dot. And that's where you get an increase of circle of confusion. So the higher the resolution of a camera, the more or the more likely to get circle of confusion very quickly, uh, therefore making it seem like you've got shallower depth of field. Boom! So uh, that's that's a bit of a, a blowout there. So what I'm saying, let's just be clear here, depth of field is not about 
the size of your sensor. It's about the lens that you're using, but also the resolution of your camera and if you're looking at the image at full resolution on a computer. So if you have a 50 megapixel camera, more things will seem slightly out of focus when you're looking at it one-to-one -one on your computer. If you've got a 12 megapixel camera, like the Nikon D700, um, more, the, they're less likely for the circle confusion to expand over to other pixels, making it look out of focus. So there you go. It's not about the size of the sensor. It's about the resolution of the sensor. So, and your focal length. So like this guy has done a fantastic video. I really, look, look he's like moving lights, light bulbs and stuff. I'll put a link to this guy's video down below if ever you're interested. Um, Cause he explains it perfectly. But just to say, if anybody's like, oh, the circle of confusion for my Nikon D700, like here they've got D800 and 700 in the same category. That's not how it should be. Anyway, just letting you know, I'll put all the links down to this below if you want to really go in depth about depth of field. One last thing is that if you are on my photography channel, you may not know that I've got two other channels. One is my exercise channel, which you can check out, which is Don Bauer Exercise. Uh, I think the actual name is just youtube.com forward slash Don Bauer. And I've also got another one on this channel. Uh, so this is, I've got Dom's Talks. And a lot of that is going to be about well, me dealing with my first ever newborn baby, uh, little Logan Bauer, uh, born on the 4th of September. Uh, and so I'm, I'm learning to be a dad. So it's all my mistakes and all the things which I'm learning which are quite useful. So if you want to see more about little Logan and how he's getting on, check out Dom's talks. And if you want to see, oh, I've also got Dom's flights as well. So uh, again, I'm doing a lot of stuff flying my DJI Phantom uh, around the places uh, and also going through the, the process of getting the, li the license to do it commercially. So if you want to see how I'm doing that, check out the Dom's flights channel as well. I should put all the links to down below. So thanks for watching. Bye-bye.